welcome to my channel. I am Crystal LTV, also known as Crystal Obasanya, and this is my husband, my chocolate husband, Ola Yinka Obasanya, aka Baby Daddy, aka my hubby, aka my man's them, aka yes. all of them, okay? All of them. All of them. But welcome to my channel. If you are new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you are an already subscriber fam, what is up? Today we're going to do a Q&A for our kind of courtship and marriage as well. We received so many questions while we were courting and also you guys asked so many questions via Instagram. So we're gonna go ahead and answer those questions today. And I look forward to you guys getting to know more about us and getting to learn more about our journey. You ready, babe? Let's do it. All right, so the first question on here is, how many kids do you want? Three. I <laughs> want three kids. I want the first one to be a boy, because I want him to be my little, you know what I'm saying, protector. And girls can be want, protectors. Girls can be protectors too, you're right. But I want my little boy to be, you know, especially when the girls start having, like I want two girls. And and I want, you know, when they start having boyfriends and stuff coming around, I want their brother to be that, you know, like, oh look, that's my little <laughs> sister right there. Don't try nothing. You can because I'm gonna that. I'm gonna be that. Okay. Alright? Don't get it twisted. I'm still going to be that. Okay. But I just want my little, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. man yeah. to help out with that. So. That makes sense. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, I want four kids. I just feel like three is an odd number. Like, why why do you have three kids? Have four. Like, just go out, go big or go home, right? So I want to have four kids, um, two girls and two boys. I want to have a girl first. Mommy and me outfits. Hashtag mommy and me outfits. Okay. I want to have a girl just because I want to dress her up. I want to just like do girly stuff with her. Cause I didn't I wasn't raised with a sister. So um I kind of missed out on that experience of, you know, just having girly stuff around me or just having a baby girl around me, like period. So um, I would be really, really excited to have a girl first. So I'm definitely team girl, he's definitely team boy, but we'll see. Team boy first. Okay. Not not team boy, I want. I still want my I'm team, team girl first, you're team boy first, but yeah. we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. So the next question is, who said I love you first? Uh, I did, I said <laughs> I love you first and uh, yeah, that's actually the first time I ever said, like, told a girl I love you, yeah. like, and meant it. So, Aww. yeah. Yes, he mm -hmm. said I love you first. Um, it was crazy how it happened because we were on the phone and he was just like, I love you. Like, before we hung up, he was like, I love you. And I'm like, what? Hold on. Yes, baby. Uh, it was, baby, a, lot, it was the a lot phone. smoother. It was a lot smoother. How did you say it? How, did, how do you recall you saying it? I was like, girl. No, I love you, right? <laughs> and she was like, oh. <laughs> you know, no. but no, it was it was smooth. It was it was it I was chalk. Exactly okay, the happened, thing is, baby, it, was it wasn't it was smooth. smooth because you said it <laughs> you said it right before you hung up, which caught me off guard because you had never said it before. So I was like, hold on. If he about to say he loves me, he needs to say it well, well. Like well, well, you know? And he needs to make sure like it, like, you know, that I've, I've acknowledged it and I know what he's saying. I don't want it to be like a, a rolling over kind of thing. Like, oh, I love you. Like, wait, 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 wait. This is your first time saying it. Let's get this out really well. So I was like, did you just say you love me? And he was like, yeah. And then I, and I said, I love you back too. I think so. I think I did. I mean, that makes more sure sense. So I was probably just like, I love you too. And yeah. that's basically how it worked. Our next question is, what is one thing we both still had to work on internally while dating? One thing we had to work on internally, uh, man, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, maybe there's one a lot, thing. Um, but one thing I would say would just be um, pride, mm -hmm. and I, I think that's probably something that's going to be for everything. Mm -hmm. um, but I think pride was definitely one thing that just had to be broken down over and over and over again. It still is, mm -hmm. you know, so I would say pride. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I don't know if this question means, like, what were we working on internally for, in ourselves? So this you mentioned for yours and yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, within me, like, internally, I would have to say that one thing that I had to be broken down was my independency, I guess. Like, living for myself, thinking about myself, fending for myself. 
um, I had to like think more of the aspect of we and what that would look like and I guess basically just selfishness that's what, pretty much what it boils down to um, I really had to work on that internally and um, figure out what it would look like for us to become a we and for me to become more selfless to bring him in more than I'm wanting to bring myself you know into the picture and be the bigger picture so um, really just having to let that let that go and I'm still working on it today you know um, being more selfless being more loving being more graceful um, and all that stuff um, has been stuff that I really had to deal with so the next question is how did you know that I was the one and how did I know that you were the one yeah, that's a good question. Um, I don't really believe in the idea of the one, actually. Um, but I would say I knew that Crystal was the person I wanted to marry. Uh, in a little background, I was I was kind of already looking towards marriage. You know, like I was a married-minded man. Like, you know, uh, so when we started dating, it was like, look, this ain't, we ain't just dating today, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And if I see the qualities in you that I, I, I'm looking for in a wife, mm -hmm. then, you know, I'm moving down that road, mm -hmm. you know? But I, I think the more I just spent time with Crystal, the more I just um, saw her character, saw her heart, um, the more convinced I was that this is the person I want to marry. And, it, it, and I just saw, like, even the good and the bad, like, mm -hmm. this is someone that I'm willing to spend the rest of my life with, right, yeah. you know, and I think for me, that's when, quote unquote, I knew she was the one, is when I just saw that this is someone that I'm willing to spend the rest of my life with, mm -hmm. um, no matter what, through the ups and through the downs, you know, when yeah. I came to that place, you know, started engagement ring shopping and, you know, making it do what it do. <laughs> Bless you. Woo. Okay. Hold on, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, man. Like, I would say that I also don't really agree in the one because to me it's like, what if the one dies? Like, does that mean you stay single forever? Does that mean you just never get married? Does that mean that God just doesn't have anyone for you? I don't really agree with the one concept or theory just because it's not fully laced in God's, like, grace, you know, or God's unconditional love. And the unconditional love you're meant to show each other. So and when not everybody you, is gonna get married. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So when you find someone you wanna be with, if that person was perfect for you in every single area or just a perfect person, there would be no need for you to show grace, there'd be no need for you to show unconditional love, there'd be no need for you for you to show mercy. Hence, there would be no need for you to grow and be sanctified. Okay? So <laughs> That's why it's like there is no soulmate, the one that's just perfect because you have a lot of stretching to do and God is intending to do that through your spouse yeah. if that's his plan for you to marry. So how I knew Yinka was the person I wanted to marry was because I saw him as someone I could truly do the rest of my life with, someone I could laugh with, someone I can raise my kids with, seeing the kind of man that he is, asking myself, is this someone that I want to raise my kids is this someone that i want my kids to become or to resemble or embody and honestly after asking myself those questions and seeing how man like yes 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 like this is what i want um it then lined up for me and made more sense like why would i want to bring my best friend like why not so that's what eventually kind of got me in that perspective of he is someone i really want to marry he's someone that i can see the see spending the rest of my life with so that's kind of how we ended up here the next question is, is premarital counseling really as tough as people say it is? Yeah, it, it can be, mm -hmm. uh, depending on, you get in what you, you no, you get out what you put in. Uh, and if you're honest and you're real, mm -hmm. in premarital counsel, it's, right. it's going to bring out a lot of stuff. And mm -hmm. I think with me and Crystal, I don't know what kind of expectations we came in with, mm -hmm. uh, but what we quickly realized is that we weren't on the same page mm -hmm. on as many things as we thought we were right. on the same page about. So it was kind of like, what? Mm -hmm. You know, you think that, you know, we should eat hot dogs <laughs> for lunch every day. Oh, and I'm like... No, it's we gotta we gotta switch it up. You know, yeah, I'm just playing mm -hmm. around, but you know, just seeing we weren't on the same page mm -hmm. about some things was like not a reason for us to like run away. Even though at first mm -hmm. you're kind of like, oh my gosh, what? Whoa. That's what you think, mm -hmm. you know. But it was more so for us 
coming yeah. together, learning how to compromise, learning how to find the middle ground, mm -hmm. and, and and be one together. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's hard. That's not easy. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm I'm super grateful for for counseling and all yeah. the stuff it brought out. And, uh, I agree. I agree. Um, I'll just say retweet with everything he said. I agree. The next question is a question that I got asked so much during our courtship. Um, and the question was, did we move in together before our ceremony? So now if you're new on this channel, you may not know that Yinka and I are Nigerian and both are from different tribes. So he is from the Yoruba tribe and I'm from the Igbo tribe. So in March of 2018, we had something that you would call a dowry or a bride price. Now this video is on my channel, so I will link it below. But basically, the bride price is more of so the traditional aspect of what marriage would look like culturally. But for us, we took it more as a sign and a symbol of commitment. Um, but we did not go as far as, you know, having sex or moving in or whatever else it may be. Even though our family considered us married and considered us like, this is, there's no turning back basically from this point, we wanted to still honor God in, a, in another way by waiting until the ceremony to move in with each other, to have sex, to go the whole mile, whatever. Mm -hmm. So no, we did not move in with each other. Each other. Each other. <laughs> each other. <laughs> yeah, now, nah, uh, basically what she said, it was just more so a sign of commitment, which we wanted to honor that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we kind of compare it to in the Bible, there's this thing called betrothal. Mm -hmm. And basically that's, you know, you're saying that this is the person I want to marry. It's on paper, like this is the person mm -hmm. I'm going to marry. But the actual marriage is not made official to the consummation, which is basically just, back in the day, it was just, you know what I'm saying, sex. <laughs> and, um, so for us, we wanted to consummate on our ceremony mm -hmm. day. We wanted that to be the officialization right. of our, our union. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. The next question is, since you've already had your traditional wedding, were we still waiting? We kind of answered that in the last question. Basically, we were we we were waiting. We still waited, even though we did our traditional marriage or ceremony in a sense. We wanted to just push, even though it was really, really, really hard. We'll probably do a video on like purity and what that looked like in our relationship eventually. But I'm um, just know it was hard. And yes, we did wait. Um, are you waiting to kiss? What has that journey been like so far for you? So, were we waiting to kiss? Were we waiting to kiss? Uh, at first, no. <laughs> to, be, to be honest, bold first, face, no. <laughs> yeah, at first we we weren't, and we quickly realized uh, in our situation for us how foolish that was. Because I mean, at the end of the day, we're really attracted to each other a whole lot, like super physically attracted <laughs> to each other. Which praise the Lord, because that ain't everybody's situation. Mm -hmm. But because of that. Um, we just realized along the way that kissing is not helping us honor one another and lead mm -hmm. each other towards purity. So we had to cut it off right. um, during our courtship and uh, yeah, that last chunk right. of our of our courtship, we, we didn't kiss at right. all and it made it that much sweeter on our, our wedding day. He couldn't keep his lips off of me, pretty much. Vice versa. No, on the wedding day, but Vice he was, versa. <laughs> okay, uh -huh. fine. No, but we, on our first kiss on the wedding day, after like going that long without kissing, mm -hmm. you were like, <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah. you better prep for the night of, okay. Yeah, it's but, real. It's real. but yeah, so yeah, like you said, we waited a little bit, and it was an interesting journey. It, I would say that the more you don't kiss the easier it does get yeah. for us at first we're like oh oh man oh but then eventually you're like oh improvise so we started doing forehead kisses which would be like our kind of sign of intimacy when it comes to like saying goodbye or saying hello so we do forehead kisses which yeah. i appreciate and he did too so that was pretty good for us and we were just able to you know avoid falling into temptation and just kind of going on that slippery slope from you know where kissing can lead at times so um, that was helpful for us and and i would say to any couples that's trying to debate between this be completely honest with yourself you know if you know kissing even if it's not physically mentally brings it to a place that's not pure in thought or in action then just just don't do it you know yeah so that, that's be my suggestion right yeah the next question is, when you both had your standards for what you wanted in a partner, did they meet or surpass? Um, hmm. 
Hmm. For me, uh, Crystal wasn't my list, right? Crystal wasn't whatever list I had come up with. Um, and I thank God for that, you know, every day because at the end of the day, my list was not what I needed, right? It may have been what I wanted in a season, but it wasn't what I needed. Right. And and she's a baddie, you know, I look <laughs> at her, she's amazingly beautiful, um, but she also compliments me in so many different mm -hmm. ways. She brings things out of me mm -hmm. that I don't bring out of myself. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that. A lot of times our list can be uh, versions of ourselves, the, right, the opposite right. sex versions of mm -hmm. ourselves. And we think that's what we want, mm -hmm. you know, but God made, made it clear right. that I have more in store for you than mm -hmm. your list. So go ahead and wrinkle that thing up. Right. Throw Toss it in the it. trash. So. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I would say that um, I had a list. But the thing is, the thing about lists is you have to ask yourself, like, are you even who you want on your list? Like, do you even have the attributes that you are listing on your list? And it's crazy because we don't really think of it like that. So, um, I had a list once. I prayed over a list once and all that good stuff. But to be truthfully honest, I feel like Yinka created his own list in my life in a sense that... <laughs> in a sense that um, God knows what you need. You may know what you want, but God knows what you need. So, even though I knew what I wanted, God was like, hold on, little mama. You don't even have the rest of what you know you need on that list yet. So, when I met Yinka, people would always say, oh, it's, I don't think he's your type. I don't know. I don't know. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, this is who I want to be with. And then I realized that, man, not only is he not my type, he has created his own type in my life for me, you know, um, which now becomes a case where he can't be replicated. Like, I can't find someone like Yinka, you know, and that should be for everyone. Like, you shouldn't be able to find someone like your spouse. That's why it's your spouse. It sh they shouldn't be replaceable easily or disposable easily, you know. So that's kind of where it came for me. Um, definitely, does he have attributes from my list? Yes. But God went ahead and surpassed, you know, the list and added things that he wanted to be on the list which I now was like, wow, God, glory to you for knowing me more than I know myself. So, and like I said, back to my, my statement about there's no perfect person, there's, we still both have very, very serious flaws, you know, that we have to work on daily, but that's where we are more sanctified. That's where we are more pushed to be more like Christ, to show each other Christ, yeah. um, to shine more like Christ in our marriage, to give him the glory. Yeah. And it's in those flaws that we are able to be yeah. Christ-like. Yeah. If we didn't have flaws, we wouldn't have to be Christ-like. Yeah. So um, that's pretty much what I would say with that question. Yeah. So the next question is, what is your favorite thing about me? My favorite thing about Crystal, I love the joy that she brings, um, that she exudes. She has this like, childlike joy that is so amazing you know because i can be a 90 year old grumpy man some days and she just comes around and is her silly self and just cheers my whole day up and um, mm -hmm. i love it you know i love that about her i love that joy and that energy that she brings into my life and then i love her nose <laughs> Yeah, I love a lot of other features about, physical features about her, but her nose is like, I just love it. It's like, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I love her nose. This is, this is great. So. I joke around right and tell him that I'm going to get a nose job and he's yeah, just like. I, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> anyway, so for me, um, what I love about Yinka is how intellectual he is and how, um, he stretches me intellectually as well, which is what I've always wanted in someone that I wanted to be with eventually for life. Just being with someone who can push you to think bigger, um, think rationally, and I just love his, you know, wealth of wisdom. I just call him. A, I call him a very wise man. I do, babe. You eat so, he used to read. I mean, he used to and still does read so much. Went through four years of seminary school. Did Hebrew? Did all that good stuff? And it's just such a great guy, you know, and to me, it's, <laughs> to
to me, it's just like, you know, I don't feel, I don't have to feel intimidated by his wisdom because I know that I can come alongside him and learn and he'll also affirm my own wisdom, which makes me feel sharp like him. Like, oh, we're, we're both smart. We're both wise. So it's pretty awesome. So I really, really do love um, that part of him. That's why I was, I, I was pushing for him to, you know, start his blog because he has so much to say. He has this huge just storage of you know wisdom so share with the world and don't waste it and heck if I could push him to start a channel I would but I don't think it's time yet I don't think he's ready for that so we'll he'll be on here for time. now <laughs> he'll be on here for now yeah. um but yeah he just has so much to say and I always just want that want to get that out to the world because it can't stay within the four walls of this home because it's so powerful um but until then we'll be here uh sharing through my channel so yeah, and then I guess physically, I love his shoulders. So broad, y'all. He has such broad shoulders, and I love his chocolate girl. Let me tell you, let me tell you, girl. He has such broad shoulders, and I love his chocolate skin. Like, ugh, so rich, so 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 rich. And See, I just both those things I used to get made fun of. It's crazy. You just dark, dark jokes, and and the walking through the door people said I couldn't walk through the doors because my shoulders were so big they, they said I have to walk through like this. Well you can walk through my doors anytime. <laughs> you can walk through my, you can walk through my door, door right now. If you want to we talk about it we can go. We can go. <laughs> no but um but I mean it's it's crazy how much um I admire him, I love him and I know he loves me and admires me the same way but um that's basically uh, that for that question. Alright, so we received so many questions, but unfortunately we won't be able to answer all of them. However, we will be making individual videos that we feel cater more to certain topics that will elaborate more on questions you have asked and also some already answered questions that we received where where is your honeymoon going to be? That was in Cancun, Mexico. The video is on my channel, so make sure you look in my description box to click the link and it should be there. How did you guys start talking on the phone? That is also in our How We Met video, and that will be in my description bar below. And at any point in the relationship, have y'all been apart and had to do the long distance thing? Yes, that is also in my description box below. The videos will all be linked below, so make sure you check them out. And um, that's basically it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed us. Um, I hope you guys learned a little bit about us and just kind of See where we are right now in our relationship. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And we'll see you guys next time. Or at least I will see you guys next time on my channel. <laughs> Bye. Peace. <laughs> What? 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 What?